So now we got the space repetition ready. This is time to learn about Active Recall. Now Anki is a great tool, but once again, I want to tell you that it's not a mandatory that you take Anki for your exam. There are some exams like my dentistry or medicine exams where we have so much thing to memorize for no reason. Same is with law students. Sometimes you have to memorize all those kind of cases and different kind of penal codes and uh, God knows what, that you have to regurgitate that information whenever another case is in front of you. In those cases, Anki is amazing. Welcome to Anki part. This is going to be my Anki homepage and this is how I have broken down all kind of uh, decks that I had in different parts. Before we do that, let's see how can you download Anki. I will simply type Anki and it comes as the first thing very powerful thing, download. Here's a download button, you download it, it comes in your desktop. For desktops, it's free. For uh, Android, it's free. For iPhone, it is little, there is a price to it, 25 or $26, but it's every penny worth of it if you want it in your phone. If you just like to do it on the laptop, which I did, I never did it on my phone actually. Did it a few times, but then I try to keep my phone minimal as well, that I don't study on my phone. If you start studying on the phone, then Instagram is just a few seconds later. So I try to study and focus on my laptop only, so I keep Anki on my laptop. So once you download it, I'll see you in the next part of the video where I'll show you anatomy of Anki. See ya. Welcome back to the next part. Let's look at Anki and learn how it works. So in Anki, there are these big decks. So this is going to be my one big deck for, for AFK exam. The deck that you are looking at right now is my final deck, the one that used eventually towards the end. What I want you to do is just look at your space repetition schedule or your scoping schedule and create one deck for each of these courses. So Anki keeps it pretty easy. There are only two things. There is a card and there is a deck. So this AFK right now is going to be my deck. Under AFK, I have created sub decks, for example, part one and part two, because I created the same thing in my Microsoft OneNote part one and part two, because I went beyond the storage. So I want my Microsoft OneNote, my uh, overall uh, scoping of the topic, as well as my Anki to look the same. These are the three things I rely the most on. So I want them to look the same so that I don't have any doubt what is done where and what is incomplete and what is not complete. So uh, you would see that there is endo, cons and DM in one section, but honestly, these were all three completely different decks. If you think that this is going to be your main deck, you can just move it around and make it a main deck. If you want to merge certain decks, you can do that. There is so much you can do with Anki. So uh, this is how I have arranged it. Later, I'll give you an overview how you would create a new deck and new cards. So I put all these topics here and then later when things got easier and I want to mix things up because if you studied an endodontics like anatomy of canals and now again and again you are reviewing questions from anatomy of canals uh, sometimes you end up memorizing the information and you just know that another question has come from here and then another question is coming from this topic some questions in uh, in dentistry exams they would test you across the different disciplines but if you read that question under certain disciplines for example under conservative dentistry if i'm reading certain topic then i know the answer is gonna be related to conservative dentistry if i'm reading certain topic under orthodontics and the four options are oral surgery orthodontics uh, radiology and this then i know that answer is gonna be orthodontics because i'm reading it under orthodontics so I, what i try to do is eventually add few different decks together make it fewer and fewer decks so that i revise them in a more mixed way and uh, that just helps me so when you start you don't start like this you start by how i showed you to create your uh, microsoft OneNote deck uh, sections you in the same way you will create your anki decks for each topic now how does it work let's try to play with one of the topics i'll open this uh endodontics deck and let's see how it goes the first question shows up for me MTA does not. There are four options. I have copied it question from somewhere and pasted it right here. And when I press the space bar key, it gives me an answer. I just don't write an answer. I also write an explanation related to it. And most of the time you would see that this is copyrighted content of the training that I took for my particular National Dental Examination Board. But I, since this information is coming from this slide here, 
I screenshot the slide and I paste it right there in the description so that if I give this answer wrong, then this is the slide I get. Also, I have an option to create my own question. So in this section, I have only kept A is only wrong, all others are correct. So that I, I twist with my brain. Uh, this is what active recall is. To force yourself to think, oh, MTA does not have high setting expansion, that looks uh, incorrect does not have bismuth and uh, zirconia oxide i again i'm tricky then hydraulically actite silica i don't know setting time of two to six hours yeah that sounds right so now you are just like you know thinking critically that how many options are actually correct and how many options are incorrect if it is incorrect why is it incorrect if it is correct why is it correct you should have a solid backing behind it so that's how i got my angie flashcard created I'll show you how to be patient. I'll show you how to do it. Um, then if I answer this question correctly right now, and this is going to be my one hour revision on Anki. I do not do anything else. I just sit on my desk. Anki goes in full screen and I focus on Anki for the next uh, one hour or two hour of my assigned Anki time. And for me, it was every single day. Uh, for the last few months of the exams. Okay, so uh, if I did get it right, I will say it's easy. Show me back in 10 days. If it was difficult or if it was okay, I kind of got it, but I wish I, I had more command on it or I want to do it again. Good. Give me back in five days. If it was bad, show it back to me in 20 minutes because I'm going to work on Enki for at least one hour. So in 20 minutes, show this question again. So for example, I got it wrong. I'll press this red key, which is show it again. Then forget about it go back to the next question this is what exam is exam test you in this way and that's exactly what anki does it tests you in the same way as well focus on one question give the answer to that question move on to the next question so here is another question um, this is part of a lot of definitions that we have to remember because that entire definition would show up and i need to know what that definition is for so i have toggled or hidden this word so i don't have time to type all these definitions it's a one big chart with like 12 definitions in it and the left column is the the, the pathology and the right column is definition of that pathology so i just put a square or toggle mask on it and then i ask myself an inflammatory reaction to pulpal infection blah 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 what is that if i know the answer then i'll say it loud and i'll check spacebar it is acute apical abscess. Oh, do I know this? If yes, I answered it, go for blue, which is easy. Otherwise green, that it's okay, but give me in five days or bad that in 20 minutes, I want to do it again. So the more you keep doing it, those cards will keep coming back. And you will see that I don't waste time in typing up information. I just take screenshots from places and those screenshots I just hide the information and I ask myself a question, normal pulp, irreversible pulpitis, what are the four features? And it's right there in primary teeth, that's a feature. So that's how I create multiple questions. So this is one that I did type out, which is the most important for post selection. And I put four options there and then the answer sheet is right here. So it's all, it's a personal way of doing it. What makes sense to me? I just put question and then I give myself an entire lecture slide that do you remember this lecture slide? That's where I asked this question from. So I might go ahead and read all these numbers one more time. So I hope this makes sense here, clinical situation and what kind of clinical decisions you will take. So for example, in the, in the lower two, you can see what the clinical situation was and what the clinical decision was. But in the top one, I have just hidden that part so that I quiz myself that, okay, following an INB block, profound lip numbness occurs with negative response to provoking stimuli. What do you think it is? I'll check. It's a supplemental injection should be selected based on specific clinical situation. So this is like, I'm just actively trying to trick myself and probably after doing it a few times, I would memorize this entire clinical decision chart, which is super awesome. Awesome for a person like me because I cannot read things. I cannot focus on something and memorize it. There are people with photographic memory, not me. And if it's not you, then Anki is going to be phenomenal for you. And here you will see there are more options on the screen. This is another one big chart. So I know you barely see it right now, but if I make it big, then you can probably appreciate it. 
uh, I don't know why it was too small. Maybe I, I made a smaller screenshot and you would see that, okay, assessment of truth. I need to memorize this entire chart to answer so many questions that will show up in my exams. How would I do that? I keep hiding information for different questions. So I can just do it for uh, like, I can do it in one time and I can hide information from different parts of this chart. And later when I click it, I will know, oh, I had to extract that truth because it has hopeless prognosis and done. I'm good about it. I'll go to the next question. I'll go to the next question. So that's, uh, that's a quick review of how my Anki is. So in the next video, I'm going to give you a little overview of how you can create a deck and a card on Anki in real quick form. There are multiple courses on Skillshare where you can just like dive deeper into Anki. Probably I'll create a course sometime too. But for now, I just want to give you a quick overview of how to prepare for an exam in a solid way. So see you in the next video. So this is just one video out of the 25 lectures in my entire course on Udemy on how to ace competitive exams, where you will learn some interesting topics, including how to scope your curriculum, digital note taking skills, space reputation, active recall, and some other tips to reduce test anxiety and focus on your exam. Plus I'll dive deeper into Anki, how to get started, how to create your own decks and lot, lot more. So make sure you like this video, share with a friend and subscribe to my channel. Bye.